Hey everyone, Matt here. Now that Native Instruments has added VST support and complete control, I'm going to look at a few ways to optimize the software in order to find the sounds you need when you need them. First, I'm going to look at favorites, how to assign them and where to discover them. Then we'll look at setting up some templates for your user library in order to get quick access to the sounds you need in a production, live gig, or sound design context. So check this out. So you have complete, which means you have instruments and synths and effects for every kind of music you could ever want to make. And because I have complete and ultimate, I have 17,000 sounds that I can choose from. And that's great because it gives me a lot of options. But let's not fool ourselves. That can also be really daunting. How am I going to get through all those presets? And to complicate matters further, <laughs> which is a good problem to have, Native Instruments has allowed third-party plugins inside of Complete Control. So now, I mean, you have to worry about all these other presets. And it gets overwhelming. So one thing to combat that is you should start thinking about favorites. And favorites are designated by this little star icon. Now, 17,000 sounds, I'm not going to use all those sounds ever. And chances are I'm going to use a, a few of them very, very often. So I want to start designating those as favorites. For instance, there's a patch I go to every single time I need a nice super saw type patch. And this is called Enjoyed from Massive. something I'm always going to use. It's, it's timeless, really. And I'm going to just designate it by clicking right here in the name and making it a favorite now. Now, another quick thing, if you didn't realize, you can open and close the graphical user interface in different ways, just by hitting this plus sign. Or, alternatively, holding Command 1, 2, and 3 to get through your different views. What else can we do? Well, maybe I know I love the instrument scroll from Reactor, so I can just even type in its name and see its whole list of uh, presets right here. So we can click on one of those and see if it's something I'm going to want to use. And of course, I'm going to want to use that again because <laughs> it's a lot of fun. So I'll set it as a favorite. Now you can also do this right from the hardware. If I hit Browse, and let's go ahead and just Let's look up uh, FM8 because I know I want to find some digital pads. So we'll come to Synthesizers, FM8, All Banks, and let's look at Synth Pad. And then I'm just going to hit arrow over. And for instance, here's another one I love called After Sun. Definitely something I'll be coming back to. So once I'm in the browse screen, I'm going to hit shift and then hit down on the encoder in order to make it a favorite from the controller. And sometimes I just sit down. If I'm not writing, I'll just browse through presets all day. And as you can see, this is something I would use. So of course, I just kind of went through and I just selected favorites as I'm trying to collect my digital pad sounds. Now. What happens, what is the difference between a factory favorite and a user sound? So there's a bit of a difference between a factory sound and a user sound. And the reason you're going to want to save a user preset is because if you want to customize it in any way that is relevant to how you want to work with it. So for instance, I made this after sun patch a favorite. But what happens, I turn some knobs, and I like how it sounds now. But if I load up this patch again, where was it? It's going to go right back to the default state. So let me change my parameters real quick. And I want it to show up like this next time. So what I'm going to do is actually come into the file and save as. Now I can call it whatever I want. So let's call it Digital Pad 1. I don't care what the name of it was initially. I just want to know that I'm going to come back and find digital pads in my user library. So if we come over to the user library, it's in here under FM8. But I can even customize it further by creating my own tags and attributes so I can find it 
faster and organize it in a way that is more relevant to the way I work. To do this, I'm going to hit edit. And now you can see tons of different types and modes and properties of this synth. And maybe I just want to create a new type so I can find this in a way that would make sense. For instance, digital pads. And I'm going to hit enter. And now it's checked as a digital pad type. I'm just going to hit apply. When I come out of the edit screen now, you can see, let's exit out of FM8 and just look at all digital pads. And here it is. So now when I load it up, it's starting from that starting point that I designated. Very helpful indeed. So taking this idea a step further, we can go ahead and create multiple different templates, if you will. For instance, maybe I create a type called film scoring. So every time I sit down and I want to load up some things that make sense for film scoring, they're all right here. And I can just quickly arrow through specific sounds I need. And get right into whatever way I want to work. Alternatively, I set up for multiple things. Maybe this would be film scoring or drum and bass production or house music or whatever. I also set up initial patches of all my synths that have a blank starting point. I want to kind of get in there. I don't have to worry about wiping controls of any synthesizer. I can have a blank starting point to start programming my own sounds. And think about for live use. For instance, here's a song I have called Contagious where maybe I want to play it live and I can actually just number them and complete control will read alphabetically. So here's a song I wrote and if I want to take it live, you know, I want to be able to bounce from things from the intro, the scary choir, and then I want to be able to press down and come right to my piano, for instance, and then jump to the next part, which is a, uh, you know, maybe a synth pad or something. And of course you can use all the complete control. Smart play features as well. So in this sense, every song I do can create a custom tag so I can use it live and scroll easily between each one. So just get proactive about organizing your complete control library in ways that make sense to you so you can get the most benefit out of your complete instruments.